Okay, this is the third time I am trying to record this um, part three of module 18. So I'm going to go over this again. Um, it's going to seem for the first time for you guys, but for me this is the third I've gone over this. For some reason my computer was not syncing and my files were being corrupt whenever I would try to play them and so I wasn't able to upload it with the original video um, or with my re-recording as well. So I'm going to try it again. That's hopefully this one will take. So rational exponents, the power of a power rule. This is the power here. So if I have an exponent raised to another exponent, I simply multiply those exponents together. So 8 over 15 times 3 gives me my new exponent of 8 over 5. 2 over 3 times 3 over 4 gives me the new exponent of 1 half. And you can multiply those fractions in your calculator or you can multiply them in your head. However you're multiplying those fractions, just so long as the result is correct, you'll have the correct answer. Um, for the second example or the second topic, it's the same thing, but now you have multiple um, bases and you have negative exponents. So when we have multiple bases, we have to make sure that this exponent applies to both of those bases. So that means I will have to take negative 3 fourths and multiply it by 4, and I will have to take negative 3 fourths and multiply it by this power, 1 half. So the result is a negative 3 exponent for the y base and a negative 3 exponent for the z base. Now we cannot write our answers with negative exponents, so if we imagine this as a fraction, this um, factor will go downstairs and this factor, because it's a negative exponent, will also go downstairs, leaving you with just a 1. This little invisible 1 that was there now becomes visible since it's the only thing upstairs. And this 1 that was downstairs can become invisible because there's more things down there with it now. So this would be the final answer for that problem. For the next sample, we would multiply 1 fifth times negative 5 halves, which results in negative 1 half. Then we would take 3 and multiply it by negative 5 halves, which results in negative 15 halves. Again, same thing as before, negative exponents must be dealt with. You cannot leave them as negatives. So this will go downstairs. This factor will go downstairs, leaving you with nothing on top. Or remember the imaginary one that's here that goes, um, that becomes visible at the top. And then this one that was down here, these guys are now down there, that one ends up becoming invisible. Okay, we've got about six more topics for this um, section here. So, oops. Now for square roots, your calculator will do square roots, and it will do the numbers, of course, not the variables. Um, but it'll break out the insides and the outsides of a square root if the number is not a perfect square. It'll do it all for you when it comes to square roots. When you get to cube roots and fourth roots, unfortunately, it doesn't do all of that for you with the numbers in the calculator. Okay, so for the square root of 12, it shows me that a 2 will come out and a 3 will stay inside the square root. So when I wrote it, I wrote the 2 and left some space for my variables, and then I wrote the 3 on the inside and I left some space for my variables. Now with the variables, what happens is um, you can use like, it's like, the, um, I call it the division method, but <clears throat> I really don't think that there's a formal name for it, so I can't even begin to give you the formal name for this process. But essentially what you're doing is you're taking the index and putting it outside the division symbol, which it kind of looks like, a, the square root kind of looks like a division symbol, right? And the two is already clearly on the outside, correct? And you're just writing it there instead of writing it real tiny and up um, like a superscript. And then here, instead of writing a 14 exponent, you just write a 14. And so you're doing the division with the exponents. So two goes into 14 seven times, 2 times four, 7 is um, 14. When I subtract, I get 0. So however many times the number goes in, that's how many of those variables that are going to come out. That's the new exponent on the outside. 
So it's like the outside exponent. And then this one down here is the inside exponent. Okay. So what I would do is I would write a V here and a V on the inside. And then what I'm doing in my head is 2 goes into 14 seven times with none left over. Okay. So if there's none left over, I just kind of like cross it out. And so then there's really no V's on the inside. Um, so I have 2 here and I have V to the 7th. And then inside my square root, I just have the number 3. Now for this problem, there is a square root of 9. It's just 3. Okay, and I would not have anything left on the inside. And if I type that in my calculator, you'll notice that there is nothing left on the inside. There's no square root in this expression here for my answer. So there's nothing left on the inside. For the W's, I would do the same thing. Put W's on the outside, W's on the inside, and then 2 goes into 2 one time with 0 left over. So again, if this is like there's no W's on the inside, so there's no numbers on the inside, no W's on the inside, then I don't need to write this at all. I'm just going to write 3 and W. Okay, let's move on to the next um, topic. So same, similar thing, square root of 25 is 5, and then I would put a U on the outside and a U on the inside. 2 goes into 5 two times with 1 left over. So I end up with 5u squared on the outside and square root of u still left attached. Now here, 32 is not a perfect square. So that one I did have to do in the calculator. And I got that a 4 will come out and a 2 will stay in. So that's where these parts came from. For my variable, I put x's on the outside and x's on the inside. And I did the division method to figure out what the exponents would be. So 2 actually divides into 3 once with 1 left over. Okay, then this is just 4x on the outside and 2x on the inside if you clean it up a little bit. Now, same thing for this next topic. It's just got more variables. So 45 is not a perfect square. So the square root of 45 in my calculator is 3 on the outside, 5 on the inside. So that's where these numbers came from. For my variables, I put an S here and an S on the inside, a T on the outside, a T on the inside, and then I did that division method. So 2 goes into 3 once with 1 left over. 2 goes into 8 four times with none left over. So there's really no t's left inside that radical. So all I have if I clean this up is 3, an s, and a t to the fourth. Here I have 5 and an s, and that's it. So this is a 1 to make it more clear. Now we get into the last um few examples of this section. So remember what I mentioned before. You can type in the square roots and they'll tell you what comes out and what stays in. But unfortunately, when you try to type in the cube root of 128, which is my first example, it gives me a decimal. It doesn't tell me what comes out and what stays in. So for these, I do have to do them a longer way. <coughs> Excuse me. But I am still going to apply that division method, okay? So in your packet of notes that you see, you do have a chart that says prime factorization, okay? And in that factorization chart, if you look for the number 128, you'll see that its prime factorization is a bunch of twos. How many twos? There's seven of them, which I've written here like you'll see on that sheet. But what I've done is I've written it in exponent form, okay? So since there's seven of them repeating, it's two to the seventh, right? And then I use that division rule. So I put a two on the outside, a two on the inside, and I did the division. So three goes into seven twice with one left over. Well, two squared is a four, and then two to the one is just two. So the final answer becomes four cube root of two. Similarly, we did for the 160. We looked, I looked on the chart. I found out that this was the prime factorization for it. But this time, there's one, two, three, four, five twos. So that becomes 2 to the 5th. And since there's just one solitary 5, it becomes 5 to the 1. So then I wrote a 2 on the outside, a 5 on the outside, a 2 on the inside, a 5 on the inside. Remember, whatever the bases are, they go on the outsides and then they go on the insides. That's just the setup for the division method. Then once I do the division method, I'm going to find what the exponents should be. So 5 goes into 5 once with nothing left over. 
5 goes into 1 0 times, but I still have 1 left over. So then this isn't really there, and this really isn't there. So all I have is a 2, and then the fifth root of 5. Similarly, for the fourth root of 162, I looked in the chart. It's 2 times all these 3s. So that's 2 to the 1, because it's a single 2. <coughs> Excuse me. And then 3 to the 4th, because there's 4 3s. So my two bases are 2 and a 3. So I wrote 2, 3, 2, 3. And then I did the division method. So 4 goes into 2, or I'm sorry, 4 goes into 1 0 times with 1 left over. 4 goes into 4 1 time with 0 left over. So this guy isn't really there, and this guy really there. So all I have is a single 3 on the outside and a single 2 on the inside. Excuse me. Similarly, we're going to do the same thing even if there's variables. So I do have a higher root, which means I cannot do it in my calculator. I have to go the prime factorization route. So I looked up in my chart and I found this, which means it's 2 to the 5th times a 3 to the 1. I have three bases though because of that variable. So I wrote 2, 3, and u, all my bases on the outside, and then 2, 3, and u, all my bases on the inside. And then I did the division method. So 5 goes into 5 one time with 0 left over. 5 goes into 1 0 times, so you still have that 1 left over. 5 goes into 8 one time with 3 left over. And then the guys with the 0 exponents are not really there. So all I really have on the outside is a 2 and a u. And all I have inside the fifth root is a 3 and a u cubed. Okay. Now similarly for the next example, it's just more variables. So again, a higher root, not a square root. So I cannot do this in my calculator. I have to do it using the prime factorization. <coughs> Excuse me. So I got all twos. There's actually eight of them. So I wrote 256 as 2 to the 8th. I still have my y to the 13th. I still have my z to the 15th. Now I have three bases here. So I wrote 2yz, 2yz. And then to get the exponent, do that division method. So 4 goes into 8 twice with none left over. 4 goes into 13 three times with one left over. 4 goes into 15 3 times with 3 left over. So I clean it up. 2 to squared is actually a 4. y cubed is y cubed. z cubed is z cubed. 2 to the 0 is not really there. And then I have a y and a z cubed.